Gillette, the legacy of the Razor King. This act of shaving is one that can be followed back to early human civilization. Cave paintings show that sharp objects were used as razors. Gold and copper razors have been found in Egyptian tombs. England even created a straight-edge razor in the 1700s. And yet with all this history, shaving has always been seen as a dangerous procedure. People even tried to invent better and safer instruments. But the old straight-edge razor remained in use until Gillette's disposable blade came into the picture in 1901. The history of razors and shaving would remain incomplete without knowing about Gillette, which is now a million dollar brand. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Business Unmasked, where we unmask the stories behind interesting and successful companies. Hit the like button so more people can hear stories like these and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Now let's get to the unmasking. The company's history is a tale rich with persistence, a lasting legacy, and above all else, innovation. And like all tales of innovation, it began with nothing more than a man and his dream. That man was King Camp Gillette. King Camp Gillette was born in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin on January 5, 1855. His parents were George Walcott Gillette and Fanny Lamira Camp. He was the youngest of three sons and also had two sisters. Gillette's father was what he called a sometime postmaster, weekly newspaper editor, and inventive thinker. And his mother, on the other hand, was described as a serene but also stern disciplinarian, always in control of her household. It was under her influence that King Gillette developed his lifelong belief in efficiency and his hatred for wasting time. The family moved to Chicago, Illinois, and the young boy was raised and educated there. The Gillette brothers were encouraged to use their hands, get into things, figure out how they worked, and how they could make them better and more efficient. In October of 1871, a fire devastated the city of Chicago. Gillette's father lost everything and decided to move his family to New York City. At that time, 17-year-old Gillette stayed back in Chicago and clerked for a wholesale hardware company. Two years later, he took a position in New York City, after which he promptly moved to a Kansas City, Missouri company, who promoted him to a traveling salesman position when he was just 21 years old. For the next 20 years, Gillette worked in a succession of jobs and became a prosperous and successful traveling salesman. During all those years, he found a hobby in tinkering and tried to invent new products, often without success, but that didn't stop him from trying. He was also an avid reader and had strong political views. He wanted to see radical changes in the social and economic systems of the United States. In 1890, Gillette married Atlanta Ella Gaines, nicknamed Lanty, who was the daughter of an Ohio oilman. Gillette joined the Baltimore Seal Company as the salesman for New England and New York. Not long after he joined the company, its president, William Painter invented an improved stopper, a crown bottle cap that would crimp over a bottle top. William advised Gillette to invent another disposable item that would create a steady stream of return customers. In the 1890s, Gillette was a very busy man. He had a family to take care of. He had dreams of a utopian society. Perfectly balanced, this whole thing should be. He also continued to work on his invention. By the time he first conceived of the idea that would change his life in 1895, Gillette was already well known in radical political circles. In 1894, Gillette finished The Human Drift, a manifesto of his utopian world. However, his political views and visions would never equal the success of his invention, which was about to become the most important idea of his life. One morning in 1895, Gillette had a revelation. If he could put a sharp edge on a small square of sheet steel, then he could market a safety razor blade that could be thrown away and readily replaced when it grew dull. After having the thought, Gillette rushed to a hardware store and bought steel ribbon, some pieces of brass, files, and a small vise, and began making a model of his brainchild. He even wrote a letter to his wife who was visiting her family in Ohio and stated, I have got it. Our fortune is made. Unfortunately, Gillette took six years to make his idea a reality. 
he went to technical experts who simply stated it would be impossible to produce steel that was hard, thin, and inexpensive enough for commercial development of the disposable razor blade. Gillette refused to give up. After an extensive search, he found William Emery Nickerson, an MIT-trained engineer. William was a fine inventor who took Gillette's idea as a challenge. Taking multiple possible models, he finally saw it, a wide blade that let the holder bend it into position giving them both accuracy and a sharp edge. Together, Gillette and Nickerson began making safety razors. By 1903, they had succeeded. Production of the Gillette Safety Razor and Blade began and the Gillette Safety Razor Company took off with a steady sales growth in South Boston. By the end of his second year, Gillette had produced 90,000 razor blades and 12,400,000 blades. The disposable razor was a huge success and sales grew quickly. Gillette soon became one of the best known men in the world. During World War I, the US government issued Gillette safety razors to the entire armed forces. By the end of the war, around 3.5 million razors and 32 million blades were put into military hands, converting an entire nation to the Gillette safety razor. Gillette's 1904 patents gave it the power to block entry of its signature base handles. Competitors still tried their best, entering the replaceable blade market with their own handles and blades, but no one could produce anything close to Gillette. Now, the brand did more than invent a new razor and a new blade. They invented an entire business strategy, one that's still taught in business schools and used across industries today, from VCRs and DVD players to video game systems like the Xbox and now ebook readers. It's pretty simple. Invest in a foundation, sell the product at low prices or for free, followed by selling a related product at high prices to gain back losses. In other words, Gillette's disposable blades created a new and lucrative business scheme where razors were sold for less to create the market for selling higher-priced blades, locking the consumer into a continuous revenue stream for the company and, hence, earning its name, Razor and Blades model, and has since been used by countless industries. Yet, the career businessman's vision extended far beyond grooming. Gillette's greatest ambition was to condense the United States of America into a single monolithic corporation, organized like a vast muscular apartment building and naturally powered by the Niagara Falls. Gillette made this ambition public record in four books on economic theory, one of them co-written with Upton Sinclair. In it, he proposed the United Company, in which America looks like a business and acts like a nation. This company was conceived in Gillette's imagination amid his frustration with the turn-of-the-century economy, which let individuals gain massive wealth at the expense of others in the supply chain. He emphasized this on nearly every other page of his manifesto. We must go further back than corporative societies or stores before we can hope to dam the golden blood, which flows incessantly into the hands of the non-producers, the interest takers, the schemers, and the manipulators. He ventured that 9 out of 10 American families lived hand-to-mouth, but by a more specific estimate, the richest 1% of American families in 1897 possessed as much wealth as the other 99% combined. In 2005, the richest 1% possessed more than 25 times as much wealth as the rest of our great nation. I have been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every fucking time. Yeah! Throughout the ages, Gillette's products have reflected what it means to be a man of the era, to take matters into your own hands, to want more out of life, to seek the smarter solution, and naturally, to take pride in oneself, starting with your grooming habits. That, in essence, is what it means to use Gillette and be a man in 2020. That's what the history of Gillette comes down to. We won't stop trying to better until we have achieved the best possible version.
If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It does wonders for the YouTube algorithm so more people can see our videos and so that you can be notified when we launch our next video. We try and put out at least one new one per week and as you can imagine, the research and editing alone of these type of videos takes us close to 18 hours. So we would really appreciate it if you could also check out our Patreon. For just $1 a month, you can support our work. We produce over 12 videos per month, so that is literally 8 cents per video. Thank you so much and we'll see you at our next unmasking.